sport as was has determined all our lives down through the years and there's something about sport as was that really gets the adrenaline flowing. If you're in Kerry and you're born into this beautiful county of ours, you want to be Kerry footballer, you want to win an all Ireland medal. If you're into rugby, you want to play for Munster, you want to play for Ireland. Soccer, you want to play for Ireland. Then, I suppose, you want to play Man United, Liverpool. Uh, we all have aspirations when it comes to sport. And I suppose there are very, very few of us that make it to the top, that go to the elite of their sport, that really reach the pinnacle. But I'm fortunate enough today to be with one man who has really gone to the zenith of his training career. This man, down through the years, has performed heroics in the great sport of coursing that we love. And when you get into coursing, there's only one thing you want to do, win a classic, win an Oaks, win a Derby, whatever the case may be. Few achieve it because it's so hard to get there. Uh, first of all, you've got to win that trial stake. Then you've got to get the camel. Everything has to go right for you. It's a dream for most people. There are no provincial championships in coursing. It's an open draw, no back doors, uh, no list of championships. So you really take on the best in the country from the world go. And to achieve success in coursing is indeed a great, great honour. And especially for a man who's here beside me today because he contested nine derby finals in Camel, winning seven. He won an Oaks with the great Scotch lady and some people would say he trained Rasa Rose from his home here in Cash Island to, with his good friend Colin McGrath who was domiciled in Tyrone. So I'm delighted to have the company of the legend, the one and only, what do we call him, Michael, Mickey or Mick Buffy. Michael, thank you very much for having us on your home today. Okay. Michael, first of all, I suppose we go back to stretch. Do you prefer to go as Michael, Mickey or Mick? Pardon? Which do you prefer? Michael, Mickey or Mickey? Mickey, I think. Mickey, you prefer the Mickey. Okay, so with that, Saturday night, Mickey. Mickey, we we'll take you back to your childhood. You were brought into a large family of 13, is it together? And we have 13 of us left there. Yes, yes. Where did you come in the family? About fifth. And where did the interest in the Greyhounds come from? Well, my father had a mighty life. And my grandfather had him. Yes. So, that... You were born, you were born into Greyhounds? Yeah. And uh, from the world go... No, I know of it. You started out, you didn't earn interest in athletics, didn't you? Yeah. I would like before that, I was at course in the quadrant. Were you? I was a quadrant going to Clam Mitchell since 1941. 41, your first appearance in? Yeah, my father had a carrot optic in the Derby. And that was your first run in Clam Mitchell? Yeah, yeah, my first, my first time going, my father arrived on the 10 or 11 years old here. And what was your first runner in Clamwell then, mate? Um, what was your first runner in Clamwell? I'd say maybe standing. He broke his leg. He was hot. Two to one on to win the dog. Broke his leg in the fourth round standing. Standing. No, he, he was owned by Michael Daly, I'm sure he was here. 1960. Yep. 60. A man said to me the other day when I said that he was coming out to talk to Michael Murphy, he said standing was the fastest square hunter oh, he was Michael Murphy ever had. He was an awful fast hunter. Was it? Was it? But you, you, had, you had really great success, hadn't you? Terrors. And uh, I suppose your success really is that. I quite then did, and when I got, I got dug a year twice, but quite then did, Donovan's Ranger. Donovan's Ranger. Dug a year twice. Dug a year twice. But I suppose your uh, romance with coursing really blossomed when you met Colin McGrath. Yeah. Well, I go and go. My father had him before, since I did life before that, and we were in Clan in 1941. With Carol Optic in 1941. Yeah. And uh, I stayed in the same digs as the owners of Oakport, a farm dog, and Belly Rehindas was in the same kind of. Belly Rehindas, yeah. Uh, she was trained by Bunlin and she was Nick Snabbit. And Nick yeah, yeah. And I had, you know, I was in the fine, I was there again in 1942. We had hypnotists in the Derby in 1942. He was beaten early in the stake. So all the long gone up and down since then. But I suppose, uh, going back again to the Colin McGrath thing, like, and uh, you'd always be, so, this is a great relationship, like, yeah. the, this is the Magna O'Brien thing, That's and the, right. the, this thing, this uh, Mickey Murphy and, great, and Colin McGrath. He was a great owner. Great. And for, look, mm, and oh, he'd have the gold. Okay. Generous man. Oh, Jesus, Christ. 
Who's Paul? Who picked? Paul Presbury. Oh, by Jamie again. I didn't. I didn't have to know that. No, like, but <laughs> but what I am saying to you is like that. That you started first with gay line. Who picked the dog gay line? Who saw him run first? Oh, Colin. Himself. Colin. Colin. Someone to. I think it was Minnie Mara had him on I'm, I'm not sure, no. I think so. Minnie Mara had him. And he, he picked out... He, he, bought, he, he, bought, he, bought, he bought him from Minnie Mara. Did he? But he picked out the dog then. He gave the dog to Michael Murphy from Cass Island. Was there any directions at the Colin McGrath saying, Mickey, the dog is yours, you get him ready for Colin what, what Any instructions going on the dog? No. Up to you? He'd never, he'd never ask for the weights or nothing. Never ask for nothing. Say no more, sure. Never ask it. Yeah. And, like, when uh, surely now there would have been one of the times you got the dog and you said, when you saw him, you said, holy God, how am I going to win the debut with this fella? Did uh, that, did that said, ever happen to you? <laughs> it, 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 it happened with Jay Line. He was on the world 77 pounds. And I said, Rupert, am I going to win the W? John Creedy was there with this fella. No <laughs> <laughs> chance. He was the dog ever. Yeah. He was 77 pounds, Gary. Gary, yeah. Was, is that how he was? That's all. Now, Mick Murphy gets this dog, and knowing the way you trained your dogs, I suppose every dog that came into your yard, you probably thought he was overweight, did you? You liked your dogs slim? I liked them very slim. And hip bones yeah. went up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And most of the dogs you got wouldn't have been that way, would they? No, and most of them wouldn't anyway, you know. So then Mick Murphy gets the dog. What's the first thing you do? The dog comes into the kennel, Mick. What's the first thing you do? Well... I'd take him out four or five times that day, so I'd get him used to the kid and used to the settle down, and you know, always settle down. Yeah. Take him out five, nine or ten times, in and out, and bed, and take him out again, put him in again, take him out again, he gets used to the dressing, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, when you start the training, were you a nail in the morning, man? Were you a seven o'clock? No, no, no. No. I I can't make, there'd be no full of scene early in the morning from now on? Around, oh. around nine o'clock, I'd take him out always. You, the dog, the first bit of air he saw was nine o'clock? Yeah. But they'd be out the night before late. I'd yes. have out to wait and him to the clock. So you gave him out at nine o'clock then, what was the next? You gave him his breakfast? I gave <laughs> him his breakfast and I'd gallop in the wrong, maybe half a stride, but give him a gallop in every second day. Every second day you gallop? Yeah. The day you were galloping, would you walk on that day? Huh? Would you walk on... Oh, would, very little. Very little? Very little. The day you wouldn't gallop and would you give much walking? I don't know, I wouldn't do enough, not maybe three miles. Three miles? That's all. Go to Clanwell? Yeah. Mick, there's an awful lot of people out there when they say, and they're wasting and their legs and they're burning shoe leather for nothing. That's the most I do is three miles, the most. Three miles? The most. And the very most. That's the very most. Uh, you have me bamboozled, Mick, because uh, every fella. No, taking that. Do you think that most of the dogs going to come in are they're over they're over galloped. Over galloped. Overwalked? Overwalked and over galloped. Would you do a double Keep gallop? Fresh. Keep no, fresh. never in my life. Never. Never galloped twice in one day. Never only every second day and never two days in a row. Two days in a row? No, I never yeah. galloped two never. days in a row. I galloped every second day. Yeah. Now I'll put it to you like this. Is there anything you did? that other people didn't do, or vice versa, something that you didn't do that other people did, do you think? Well, I wouldn't know. Would you think that the, the real thing was not to overwork them? Not to overwork them, but not to overwork them, but to keep them fresh. Keep them fresh? Yeah. I, yeah. A lot of people know me when they'd be listening to this, because they'd be thinking... And I'd gallop them through different fields, I'd go to different places. Different places? You wouldn't gallop any, maybe... It's the same place twice, you know. Wouldn't you? Different place of all time. You see, there'd be a lot of people now, Mick, listening to this, and they'd be after doing eight and ten miles a day oh, walking. I know, I know, I know, I know. And they'd be after double galloping. I know that. But it's not something that you'd agree with. I wouldn't do it anyway. That's exactly what you're doing every second day gallop. Is it? No more. Now, I know that you were stick to in relation to food. Most people will a breakfast and a big meal in the evening. You didn't feel that way? No, I feel them three times a day. Time to day. Breakfast. I, break up, I break up their meat and things maybe around give it around two o'clock and around half six again then. Yeah. I break up their feed, the big feed. I never give them the, 
one big feed that break it up into three places, morning and middle of the end of the evening. Now, would that be bread and oh, bread? bread and chicken, whatever, change it. Fish in that time, and beef and chicken and everything. And the beef then, would you get the much beef in the, between the two feeds of the day, how much beef? I, I only give a pound of beef. Half a pound each uh, each time? Half a pound each. Yeah. And uh, well, they give me maybe a bit, of, a, bit, a bit of chicken or something as well, like, you know. Yeah. And would you get, did you feed them bread or nuts? Oh, never nuts. No, no, my life nuts. I never used a nut. Didn't you? Only bread. Only bread. Only bread. bread. Only bread. And look, after all these, uh, I tell you now, uh, you heard me amaze Mick already, and we're, uh, we're only after starting this interview, but uh, like it would probably be different to what most people did, but then again, you had the success that most people didn't have, so you were doing it right. I don't know. You must have been. <laughs> and like you really, getting back to your uh, association again, we'll go away from your feeding and your training routine, but getting back to the 80s. You really dominated the 80s in combat, didn't you? Yeah, fairly good, in it? Yeah. Was it five five derbies? I think so. <laughs> I suppose when they come back after me, uh, you're talking with another fellow, he'd be able to sing them off, but yeah, it's like when you win like that. And did every one of those mean the same thing to you? Every one was the same to me. I just had to say which was the best. Different years, different years, I wouldn't know which. Yeah. And if I was to say to Mick Buff, you know, Mickey, what's the best dog you ever trained? You wouldn't have so many good ones, you wouldn't know. <laughs> you wouldn't know. If I was pushing you now to say, you, I really liked Pyramid Club. Yeah, he was a great dog. Great dog. Lovely striding dog. Quite a good dog, 90 pounds. Real good, beautiful dog. dog. Now, you won a derby with another dog, and I'd say when you saw him first, you got a bit of a land, done on his ranger, did you? Oh, I, I, I did. He'd he he broken he, he, he broke a hock and he had nine, nine months old. Broke a hock? Yeah. Nine months old? Yeah, he had a big lump in his hock. Yeah. So, when Mick Murphy collects the Gentleman's Ranger, Colin McGrath's after buying the dog, and he's expecting Mick Murphy to win the derby with him. And when you saw him, what did you think? Well, I had a look at the leg and I said he had a lump in the hind leg, but he must have, he must have been all right when he won his tried set. Yeah. So it, did, it didn't it didn't worry you the fact that he had a broken hock. It didn't worry you the fact that he had a broken hock at nine months. Yeah, I did not want to try for sound in you know, just perfect then. Yeah. But he'd a bit of a lump in it always. Yeah. And would you train all dogs the same? Yeah. Dog a bitch, same thing. Same thing. Get up every second day and that's the same thing. Same thing. Now, coming up the week before Clanmel, when did you lay off? Four days beforehand. No gallop for the last four days. No, 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 no walk on the gallop for the last four days. No gallop on the no walk. No, no. Just in and out of the kennel. Well, I like to take about half a mile off the road or something like that. Yeah. Three, four times a day, when nobody wouldn't walk them. No, no walking. No, only shot, shot little walks, you know. Yeah, and and obviously it worked for you, and you you kept doing that. I kept doing that. But I suppose uh, I do, there there were so many more questions, me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I suppose the main thing now that's hit me now is you were an athlete, you came from a sporting family. Was training dogs and winning derbies was it always a burning ambition of yours? Oh yeah, I was. I love winning derbies. You love winning them. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I could see that because I, I, I suppose that's how you, I suppose that's how you won so many of them. <laughs> uh, I suppose people won't believe this. Forget no dog, Pat will make him in here for dinner. I will, I lent him on me. Pat is our cameraman here today, so Mick says he's young enough all the time. Uh, you would not believe this, but Mick oh, is. I'm in, I want to do it. Okay, okay, I want. Okay, that, that's finished. That's it. We went to the age. But if you had it in your life to do back again, is there something, Mick? Apart from Greyhounds, that you would love to have done, is there any other sport that you would have gone into? Any other sport that you really liked? Well, uh, athletics. Athletics, yeah. I but you were brilliant at the athletics. I was world champion, sprinter champion. And you won uh, monster. Carries and carry, I won, carry, I won, carry championships and monster championships. And uh, uh, I swear, then again, look, when you achieve so much in one sport, it's hard to achieve in all sports. So I love the boxing as well. I love. You love. I love boxing. Because my father in 1941, he took me down to Collins' Hall to see the, the boxing. 
And I remember him when Pat O'Connor from Bowman Beat Lord, because he was a great man. And I've, I've been interested in boxing ever since. He yeah. was taking me to the boxing so I made Owen Collins' hall after the course of, yeah. of that night. And you, you love the boxing? I love boxing since. Yeah. And uh, it's what, but uh, when I'm looking at you here, no, Mick, I'm thinking of my first memories of Mickey Murphy. Uh, I think it might be about 1967, 68. Young fellow going to school the next night, taking out, my father took me out from the classroom. Uh, it was in the green, as we call it, at the back of the, the boys' school the next night. And I went out. I think, Mick, I may be wrong now, I think it was well protected you had. Yeah. I think he won the try stick the same day. But all I could see was, after the first turn, I used to take my eyes off the dogs and look over to my left hand side because I saw this aeroplane take off a white jumper, no shirt, round neck, uh, blue ladies Wellingtons. And this when I hit into the field at about 35, 40 miles an hour and the crowd cheering. And I said, that I'd love to be doing that someday, but well, fortunately we can't all do that. Well, I, I would have tried to stick with him. One bit of salt cup with him then. He was a waiter. One bit of salt cup with him then, and one the corner fair and went to the fourth round of the dog, and he died, and he died sick. Died sick. And his brother was a good dog, good for general. Oh, he's a good dog as well. Another dog that's close to your heart, I know, is quite handy. Quite handy, oh yeah. He got dog at the air awards as well. Won the Kinning Cup twice, did he? He did. Did he win the Cock Cup? He did. Yeah. Any other dog like that now, apart from the Abbey winner, that you think had the potential, but things didn't go really right? Had any other one of those dogs that you thought could have won the Derby, but didn't win it for you? Oh, Jesus Christ, sir. Went, went direct to the Offland looking the Derby. Yeah. Getting your stuff out of it and see me if I have to get in her room. So that the, the I'd several of them, sir. Standing broke his leg. Yeah. Near, odds on to win the Derby. I'd several of them out and turn them the, the, the wrists and was only waiting to stop in the semi final. Do you have any favourites? Favourites? I'd several more of them. Do you want to have the good ones? And just before we finish now, what I must do is because he has won so much and the trophies around here, the place of the garden with water, with crystal, and uh, beautiful cups around the place. But I suppose. I get Mick to call out his actual achievements. So Mick, you might call out me there what you won on the coursing fields of Ireland. Uh, nine derby finals anyway. You won nine derby finals, no, you I won seven. I won seven. You won seven. I know, I just take it away. I'll be glad to. Won seven. Windy Oaks, it's Scottish Lady, handled Russell Rose to Windy Oaks. Uh, won four Cardinal Failures. Four Cardinal Failures. Four Kingdom Cups. Four Kingdom Cups. Three Cock Cups. Three Cock Cups. Four Lixnair Cups. Four Lixnair Cups. Two Listore Cups. Two Listore Cups. The Connor Cup. The Connor Cup. Cardinal Gallia. Cardinal Gallia. The Castle Island Cup. Castle Island Cup. Abbey Dorney Cup. Hearty Cup, Abbey Dorney, yeah. North Cock Cup. No, Cock Cup in Mill Street, yeah. Won, won the Cardinal's Victron. Cardinal's Victron in your ass, yeah. Won the Leagues Cup. The Leagues Cup, yeah, right down it, yeah. Won the Constellation Derby as well. You won the Cock with the Dog uh, Ties Glory. Yeah, for my hat, Yeah. Won the Cup Charleville. Yes. Won the Constellation Derby. You won the Constellation, yes. Won the Cup Dock Raffin. Cup and Dock Raffin, yeah. Won the Cup Temple 2 here. Temple 2 here, Cup. Won the Munster Cup. Newcastle West Munster Cup. Won the Limerick Cup. Lemmy Cup. Won the Irish Plate. Won the Irish Plate, but that was Tony's first, was it, when it happened, Doug? I think it yeah, was. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Won the Irish Purse. Won the Gleason Select Beach Stakes twice. Twice. Um, yeah, but that's all I can think of. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fair memory, Mick. You have a fair memory. You have a fair memory. Mick, it has been an absolute, an honour, a privilege, and a pleasure. Because since I was young fellow going to course meetings, I admired your style of training dogs. Your success is unparalleled in this game. And good and healthy and long life to you. And hopefully we'll see you back in Camelagan someday. Mick Murphy, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Thanks very much for your Thanks. time.